Hey everyone, it's Deja with KnitAndCrocheteverAfter.com. Today we're going to be doing the Dank Verts Stitch Pattern. I'm calling it Verts because it's got this vertical look to it. The pattern is below. We're going to get started and then I'll talk more about the sample after we do the stitches. Alright, here we go. Okay, this super easy stitch pattern is going to have a multiple of three cast on stitches. So whatever width you want, times that by three. I've got 12 here to start with. And it's a basic two pattern or two row pattern repeat. Our first row is going to be a knit one, slip one, knit one. Now with the slip, you, you're going to slip it purl wise. You can either do it with the yarn in the back or in the front. My sample is made with it in front. So I'm going to do it in the back here so we can see the difference. But you're going to slip it as if to purl and then knit the next one. And you're just gonna do those three stitches all the way across. So the benefit of holding the yarn in the back when you slip purl is that it's a little faster. And then with it in the front, it's a little slower, but it has a different kind of visual to it. So you'll see the difference once we um, get to that. So it's knit one, slide one, slip one, and knit one. And we'll leave this last stitch. And then row two is the end of the repeat, and it's basically purling across. So very simple backside, but I like the backside of this stitch pattern. It does not look like just purl bumps. It's got a really neat look, and it might actually be a little different when we're slipping purl-wise with the yarn in the back, so that'll be interesting to see as well the difference between slipping it with the yarn in front or behind. So I'm going to do a couple more rows and then we'll take a look at our sample and the difference here. So again, we're going to knit one, slip one, knit one, knit one, slip, and knit. And I'm going to go ahead and do a few more rows without the camera so you don't have to keep watching me purl. Oops, I slipped one when I should have knit. So just make sure that you're doing that knit, slip, knit, and not going just knit, slip, knit, slip, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I'll come back after a few more rows and then we'll look at both of the samples. Okay, I've done a few more rows and I think I like purling or slipping it purl-wise with the yarn in front just because you don't really get that much difference from the knit to the slip. It gets the, the slip stitch or these kind of bigger because I've done about eight rows and it looks like just four in the slip. So it just kind of gives you a bigger chain in between the regular knit stitches. And the back doesn't really have any kind of cool look to it. It looks like kind of funky purl stitches because the slips are a little bit wider. So it does, I don't know, I don't really, I don't really like it. It's kind of boring. But all you have to do with this is if you just change it to slipping with the yarn in front, you get this bar that comes across. So it's almost like a ladder in between your knit stitches. So it gives it a lot more visual interest. I like it a lot better. I put a border on this because it will curl because it's just pretty much knit stitches. The back though is also really cool. I like how the back turns out. It actually makes it kind of a cool reverse fabric that I wouldn't mind doing a scarf in. So it's just a lot more visually interesting than just slipping it with the yarn in back. So, you know, you might disagree, no problem, but that's what I like. So that is the dank, uh, whatever we call this, <laughs> the dank verts stitch pattern. I'm Deja with Knit and Crochet Ever After .com, and thank you for watching.